Musicians, uh, a lot of the business people in the area, like Helen Khan at Cup and Top, Jim at Pivot Media, and Collective Copies. Uh, everyone was very supportive about having sort of a Florence open house, which is essentially what this is. So this just has sort of an art bent to it. Now, did you uh, are you working with a grant? Is it the, the Northampton City uh, grant, or who's, who's well, grant? Are you talking about? The first, uh, let's see, the second uh, edition of this event was in May, on May 1st, and that was funded by the Northampton Arts Council, partially funded. Um, I was able to get a grant to do about a third of the cost of the funding. That's great. And, and the rest comes from businesses here in town? Basically sponsorships from businesses in town or individuals who want to promote their, you know, the community here. Now, Carla, you and I were talking a little bit before this that you're a co-curator. Uh, is that what you call find people to participate in this? Or other artists? Are you, did you know, are you pretty active in the art community already? Yeah, um, Donabelle had the idea of doing the pods around town. And so what I worked on was basically finding some interesting artists that we could have do installations of different kinds in those spaces. Um, and I work at Hampshire College at the Creativity Center there, so I know a lot of faculty that are artists, but also have met a lot of local artists just from doing work in the community myself. Now you're doing one of the boxes tonight. Which one are you doing? I'm doing the, the location on Depot Street alongside the bike path right by Florence Paint. Um, and what we're doing in there is showing short films. One is a collaboration that I worked on with um, my filmmaking partner, and we are called The Quarry and the Coast. And then a friend of mine is showing four or five short films alongside that. His, his name is Matthew Newman, he goes by Mount Emalt. And a lot of locals know him as um, the director of the recent Pixies videos that just came out. And I'm really interested in seeing these boxes. Are they, do you repeat, or is it just a one-time show? You go see it. If I go now, will it be re shown again at 7? It's just a one time. No, those films will play on a loop throughout okay. the night. So, nice. you, so people so can stop in. Anything. You won't miss anything. They'll play. They're, the whole loop is about 15 minutes. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a way that people can stop in, see a few, or sit down. There's chairs in there and watch the whole viewing. The other artists are doing installations that people can pop into at any time and interact with or view. Uh, and then there's one artist, John Slepian, who's in the art box over by uh, the Florence Arts and Business Building, uh, that he's doing some timed intervals of his performance because it's performance art. You guys really have a great money. It's beautiful, it's cool, it's sunny, beautiful fall evening to do this. And I'm going to look forward to running around town and trying to film as much as I can. It was on PCTV for everybody to see. And I just want to thank you for your time, Donabelle and Carla. And uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll be seeing you tonight running around. You'll be running around faster than me, but uh, I'll see you later tonight. Thank you Thanks. so much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. These people should be. Winter Wonderland. In a ball pit at McDonald's. In a ball pit at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, can I go in? Can I still go in? Uh, hey, son, I don't think you should. I'm going in. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, no. Someone called the fire department. Apparently, there was an emergency. There's so many balls in here. Ew! Why is your son covered in vomit? I don't. I'll save feel, you, son. It was I feel so slimy. <laughs> you guys. 
I get out of here, man. You're not even kidding. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Why don't we bother you? Dude, you have facial no, hair. You're definitely not a kid. <laughs> That's it. I'm closing this entire restaurant down. See? <laughs> All right, so everybody up here, so by round of applause, who do you think deserves to be voted out of this seat? Zach Deeds. Wait, do we not clap if you want them off or do we clap loud? You clap loud, loud if you want me off. Yeah. yeah. Clap loud for me. Yeah. Zach. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Henry. Oh. Jake.
Okay, here we are at uh, the Writer's Mill, which is a resource for writers to have equipment and space and quiet and share times with, with other writers. Yes. We're talking to Jana. Yes. Who is on the steering committee. Yes. Jana, can you tell us a little bit about the Writer's Mill? We are a cooperative working space for writers of all kinds in the Valley. So we have um, poets and novelists, academics, um, editors, nonfiction writers. We have a woman who specializes in writing math textbooks. So writers of all kinds can come here who would normally be working out of a home office or out of coffee shops and have um, the uh, camaraderie and company and networking of a regular office, um, but with uh, quiet, dedicated workspace. Um, we like to say that it's uh, more productive than being at home, um, but less, uh, we'll say, uh, manic and distracting than a coffee shop. I think it's a brilliant idea because, like you said, I mean, writers are so isolated. Yes. And, you know, if they want to be isolated, fine, they can, but if they want to be around other writers and bounce things off of them, which is kind of an important part of writing. Yes. Uh, it's cool to have a, a place like this. How long have you been around? Um, we've been around since 2007, and we used to be um, in the Cutlery Building down on Riverside Drive, and we've been in this location for the last two years, and we're very excited about our new space, and hopefully you'll walk around a little bit. It's a beautiful space, and we're really happy here. Well, having this Florence night out is just a great opportunity to explore all these things. I live in Florence. It's great. And I never knew that you guys were here. And yes. I think showing this on NCTV is right, so going to get you a lot more writers that are going to want to come here because they're going to see how cool it really is. Could you show us, like, uh, maybe a space that a writer would be working in? Or Absolutely. Something like that? Okay, yeah. let's go take a look. Well, so this is one of the offices that uh, a writer could come and habitate in and uh, get his creative juices, her creative juices uh, going. Exactly. Um, how, how, what are your hours? How, how are you um, members have 24 hour access 365 days a year, so wow. everybody just gets a key and you can come and go as you please. That is amazing. Because um, so yeah, who knows when the muse is going to strike. Exactly, right? and some people have kids and so they work while their kids are at school and other people like myself kind of get going a little later in the day and want to stay until late and when you're a member you can come in absolutely anytime. From you know lower mid-market all the way up to very high end, uh, the more handmade the more interesting it can be. Uh, some of my favorites are Nama Rococo, which is hand painted and hand screen printed. Another one is uh, Adelphi wall coverings from Sharon Springs, New York. And then we have um, Lori Weitzner is the fiber wall covering. We have Coastal Studios hand prints um, on the table. And then for Victorian enthusiasts, there's Bradbury and Bradbury wall coverings which are reproduction <coughs> Victorian papers that have just a beautiful depth and quality and they all hang very well. Wall coverings always end up being a very good solution when installed by a professional paper hanger and those can be found at going to ngpp.org. Uh, any member of the National Guild of Professional Paper Hangers will install things properly and that will be a successful install. Great. Well, thank you so much. This is something completely new to me, and it will be for our audience, too. Thank you. Great.